but you're gonna wanna bring a pair of hiking shoes to get down to these volcanic bug eaters. Well, you better saddle up for this week's episode of Fish On. Today, we're using a general grade 5W30 oil. All right, well, I'm here with uh, Perch Poaching Powerhouse, Zach Kaufman. Well, when the sun goes down, the crazy catfish killing king, Brent Henderson, comes out. All right, well, I'm here with the lure lord of the lake, Tyler Asher. And in today's episode, we're going to be working on a leaky faucet to try out our sea legs on the coast of Coos Bay. Well, the cab show ends around 10 o'clock, but if you haven't got your music fixed by now, hop aboard Marco's Eco Cab. Till next week, I'm John Bartell. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Well, the air is stagnant, and the bugs are out. But that means it's prime feeding time for the fish here at the Williamson River. So what we're going to do is trade out our hook, line, and sinker for a hand-tied nymph as we try our hand at the art of fly fishing. So let's gear up and head out. Meandering along picturesque forest lands and rural farm country, the Williamson River is a fly fisher's dream. Located just 25 miles north of Klamath Falls, the river runs along an abundance of unique attractions, like the historic Collier State Park Logging Museum. With one of the largest collection of logging artifacts in the state, visitors can catch a glimpse of some of the earliest equipment used in the logging industry. And if you have time, take the scenic hike up Spring Creek. Here, you'll see water from Crater Lake flow through hundreds of miles of lava tubes and billow right out of the ground. This is a great spot to get a cool drink right before you hit the fishing banks. So I'm out here with uh, Darren Rowe, Klamath Falls uh, fly fishing phenomenon. And Darren, you've been fishing uh, this area for about 10 years now. Uh, what's, what's the trick to catching a fish? Well, really, John, what it is is knowing your bugs. The entomology is really important for the stream that uh, you're going to fish. So if you understand what bugs there are and what's hatching, you're going to get more strikes, which means you're going to get more hookups and you're going to catch more fish. All right, well, that's what we're looking for. And Darren does know his bugs. Not but 15 minutes after tying a stonefly dropper on the line, a 24-inch trout nails the line. Whoa, fish on. Come noon, the fishing slows down a bit. So to cool off, I'm going to show you where you can go spelunking in some ancient lava tubes. Formed by solidifying molten lava spewed from nearby volcanoes, Lava Bed National Monument holds one of the world's most extensive lava tube displays. Just 40 miles south of Kalamath Falls, the monument holds over 700 caves, and many of them have built-in stairs or concrete pathways. Now, some of the caves are lit and have interactive displays, but I think you're going to want to take a flashlight so you can get down and dirty and explore all the tubes. Whether you're fishing the banks or you're just crawling the caves, doesn't get much better than this in Kalamath Falls. Till next week, I'm John Bartell. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! By the book, don't take too long. Set the hook, check, check, check. feel it in strong. Fish on. Fish on. Well, it's a dinner and a show for date night as we wine and dine at the Oregon Cabaret Theater. So grab your sweetheart or your prospective sweetheart and sit back and enjoy the show. Since 1986, the Oregon Cabaret Theater has been producing high quality productions in their uniquely inviting atmosphere. And performing more than 270 shows a year, the theater has been entertaining guests with some of Broadway's most popular plays, including 15 of their own original works. And if you're wondering about the food, the cab offers one of the most diverse menus in Ashland. All right, well, I'm here with the Oregon Cabaret's chef, James Rustin. And uh, James, I've been to the cab many times, but I've never seen this dish here. What is it? Uh, well, this is tonight's featured special. It's uh, herb marinated seared shrimp with first of the year uh, Oregon chanterelles and organic green beans. All right, and James, I, I noticed you've got a nice vegetarian dish here. What is this? Well, that is a uh, lo uh, local eggplant and goat cheese and tomato stack that's uh, one of our most popular vegetarian items. Uh, it goes very delicious with this uh, Roxy and Pinot Grigio. I'm gonna pour you a glass and get right back to the kitchen, John. Now shows at the cabaret change every two or three months. Right now, the musical I Love You, You're Perfect now changes in session. This hilarious musical comedy is about the ups and downs of relationships, a perfect light-hearted show for well-seasoned couples or ones just starting out. And if you still have room after dinner, try their famous Dick A. Pie at intermission. Well, the cab show ends around 10 o'clock, but if you haven't got your music fixed by now, hop aboard Marco's Eco Cab. He'll take you to Alex's for a little late night music and some pretty choice cocktails. Ashland's nightlife is growing, and there's a restaurant or bar for any social group. But if you're looking for a lively dance hall with secluded seating, Alex's is the place. They feature over three nights of live music, 
and showcase some of the best rising stars in Southern Oregon. And its unique balcony setting offers an amazing view of the downtown plaza, perfect for a breath of fresh air or those intimate conversations. Well, as you can see, date night doesn't have to be just dinner and a movie. So get out there and spice things up with the diversities of Southern Oregon's nightlife. Till next week, I'm John Bartell with your weekend date night. Ready to go? Welcome to Fixing Stuff with John. In today's episode, we're going to be working on a leaky faucet. Did you know a leaky faucet can produce up to 20 gallons of wastewater a day? That's costing you money, and it's not so good for the environment either. Today's job's relatively simple. We're actually only going to need two tools, an adjustable wrench and a screwdriver. Now, like I said, anyone can do this job. But if you were to have a plumber to come out and take a look at your sink, it's probably going to cost you around 60 bucks. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it for as little as $7. Now, nine times out of 10, the culprit to a leaky faucet is a worn gasket. So to fix it, we're gonna replace it. All right, so first we're gonna need to find the shutoff valve. It's usually underneath the sink. Once you find it, shut both the cold and hot water off. Next, you'll need to remove the knob on the faucet. It's fairly easy. On this one, you just pop off the cover and then with a screwdriver, remove the screw inside. Now, once the knob's off, you'll need to use an adjustable wrench to unscrew the packing nut. This is the bottom nut that holds the faucet valve in place. After that, just pull off the white plastic valve. Well, now that you have the valve out, look inside the faucet. We're looking for a small gasket and spring that's inside here. This one looks pretty worn, so let's head down to the hardware store and pick up a new one. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Hey, John, how's it going? Good, What good. are we working on today? Well, I got a leaky faucet. Do you guys happen to have a gasket? That, I, uh, I sure do. Have... These are the old cups and springs right here. Okay. So that would be the one that I'd use right there. So is right. this uh, kind of a common thing that goes very, out? Very common. Pretty easy to put in and, and looks like this piece, let's take a look at it. Looks like you're in good shape here. So okay. the cups and springs should do it. Now, what about some Teflon tape? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that help what you? do you suggest? Yeah. I, I, I always like the Teflon tape. It seems to do a better job and and it, uh, you won't get the... It's not as messy, yeah. Not as messy, yes. Okay, so. all right. Well, I think uh, that's everything I need. So, okay. all right, thanks a lot, Well, Mike. thanks. Okay, Thanks Bye. for coming in. Well, now that we have our parts, insert the new gasket and spring into the faucet. After that, push in the old plastic valve right back in its place. Now, to prevent leaks, wrap the faucet threads with the Teflon tape we just bought, and then screw on the packing nut after that. Well, now all that's left to do is to reinstall the knob, and then turn on the shutoff valve, and then you're done. Well, no more leaks and no more problems. With a little effort and doing things by yourself, you just saved yourself a call to the plumber. I'm John Bartell. We'll see you next week.